can see that short turn I have here. A nice short turn. Just tip the tip in the exact center. But I need to have a way to check it. Okay. First I'm going to get and see if I think I'm close. And then turn the nice lay it on your nice flat surface. Take a piece of soapstone, lay it down, scribe it, look at it with optimizers if you're blind like me. Scribe it again, see what if it's hitting the same line, mark which side needs to come off, and go back to the grinder. And then take it off. It's still on that short line. And then we bring this down with it. Stop the stick is where I want it. When I start it, this is very thin. Okay, I'm about right on it. So that that is that's where I know to know that you have a straight blade that, that you know from this part to this part. Your cutting edge looks centered here. You have a scribe line right there to look at. You can visually look at that. And you still have room to adjust that as you go. But now your tip is in the middle. Now we have, as you see, a little bit of thickness left here. So we need to blend that. Well, distal taper is important, but over distal tapering something is also not good. So we want to taper this tip in, but we don't want to do it from way back here. It's not any advantage to the knife being making it more fragile. What my rule of thumb is for taper on a tip, linear taper this way, is one to one and a half times the width of the blade in length. Okay? So that I have a nice degree of taper, but not overly taper. So I'm going to come back over here and do that. And I'm going to do that by now using the stick again keep my pressure up high, and this time I'm going to use my arm, this arm, and I'm going to pull out, and go along. And as I do that, you can see that it starts to blend all that together. And you want to be careful that you don't you want, if you're looking for a full uh, length of grind across there. You don't want to go too much on the cutting edge. You're trying to get this whole thing flattened out and blended. So that's the first step after, after you've gotten the flaps all cleaned up. And again, like I said, it's after heat treat. Keep that cool. You do not want to burn it. And I run it to go a little slower at this point. Now once I get this thing down to where I think I've got it all right, I'm going to check that. Real quick, make sure I am sure I have not made any changes in my center line. Looks pretty good. Okay, now we go. And you can continue to uh, you get that down until you have your cutting edge all the same thickness. Now, the, the disc helps us a lot also. And what's the difference between the disc and the belt is that the disc has a wider surface. So it's much easier to uh, keep things going smooth and flat and all of that. So, and I can now pull out as I go around the tip. I'm going up down here, pulling out, and I'm going to blend all this in. We came off of a 80 grit over there, and now we're on a 120 grit. Okay, and as I do this, I'm refining everything, getting that all that grind down where it's real clean. And at the same time, getting that edge down. So on these machines, you can.
you can normally if you have a break, these have to stop and reverse. So the best thing you probably do, I think, mean, is stop and then reverse. But I'm not too sure because it's three days and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on the eight days. Three days you can reverse at full speed. So I about got this thing roughed in to start doing some more important things, which is in the shoulders. Now, you want to be very careful that you do it all. Just right. How do you keep from getting some radius in there? Radius in what? Back here at the, the shoulder. Which is over. You're coming in here and you got the radius on the... On the I'm going up and down. Oh, okay. See, so as I come in here, I come in here and going up and down. And if you hold it right, it's almost impossible to cut that out. It's a, from a geometrical uh, idea, if you keep that plane on this plane, it would take a long time to take that much metal out. Mm -hmm. But if you come into this grinder on an angle, it won't take but about one foot little bitty part of a second to go through that corner. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's why you always start here, work in, and over, and go down. Okay. Now, and that's all, right now we haven't even squared these up. But look how nice they're starting to look. And, we, and they're not even, but we're going to get there. Okay, now there's a couple ways to get even. Let me get that match out there. And you can apply a lot of pressure to these grinders. I mean, they're very strong, um, but again, nothing does you any good if you're using bad abrasives. And if you find that you're really working and pushing hard, um, like, you know, it's, what you're going to find is it will not go into the width of anything. You'll start getting, you know, like, modelly type grinding. It's just not going to make the whole cut. So when you even begin to feel that, you're probably behind times when you should have changed the base. When I when I'm finishing the knife on the disc, shoot, I have a stack of paper here that I can kind of believe. Because I'll take it down at least to 320. Uh, and that'll be, you know, a very nice starting point to do my hands finishing. Well, your hand finishing is only if that you, know, you can machine finish if you want to. Totally up to you. Um, but in the world of night collecting, right. they seem to expect us to do satin finishes on forged blades and flat grinds. And just whoever, whoever created that should have been shot. But um, it seems to me what you know the collectors like is a satin finish. And so a satin finish means that it's linear with the length of the knife and it's all done by hand. Um, if you have a plunge cut, you have to do it by hand almost. So the cleaner it is, the better it is. Now, right now, I'm gonna do one little thing here. And that's, I have right now a little chunk right here I need to square up. So if this table should be square. I don't know if it is, but we'll just to have a tight square. And I'm gonna take that move that forward a little bit. I'm also going to come over here and square up the bottom of my tassel a little bit. Now, you're going to be surprised how close it is right now. Now, you can see Okay. We got this set up for this. You can shoot this on the camera, right? Uh, we can do a little close up here where you guys can all see that at the same time. 
Other camera. Where's the, okay. Right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's see if we can get that. Can you see that those are relatively even without passing this around? Is that, I can't hold it very still, I guess. But And that's without even putting the guide on it, okay? Now, the best way to look at this, I'm going to try and show you on film, is to look at it from the backside. Uh, because as you look at it from the backside, both eyes open, see how I'm turning it back and forth? When you do it and it's really level with your eyes, you'll see that if you have both eyes open like I do right now, I'm looking at that. If you don't have your flatten, your table square to your flatten, one is going to go up and one is going to go down. You could have these two points even, but one may be lopped this way, and the other one may be lopped the other way. That's not good, okay? That's not good enough for today's collectors. And this, this is the one place that they always look, is the plunge cuts. You know, they may not know anything else about knives, but they're going to look there. And they're going to say, wow, you must not be very good because those are off. So to, it's, it's almost silly, but it's, you know, that's kind of the way they look. Like, that's my brother back there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to be a new owner, a proud new owner. And, uh, but yeah, um, so now, where's that block right here? So what I like to do is I like, you know, everybody has their idea of what symmetry is and, and what things should be done and how they should be done. I like to work off my spine, as, and, and I like for my punch cuts to be square to the spine. And so I'm, what I'm going to do is just take and uh, take a small square, and I'm going to look at that and make sure it looks square. Well, it's right on the money because this wonderful machine is right on the money. So that's a good thing. Okay. Now. What I want to do, I know that's good. Now all I need to do is, I don't even need to draw a line on it because it's perfectly square. And so the next thing I want to do is put my, my block on there. And you put the carbide face side forward. These have a slide pin on them, guide pin. And I'm going to do this with my eyeballs on and good light. And line that up. You've got, if one is further back towards the tang than the other, then you have to line that one up. Because you want the surface to be right there. You know, if it's behind the carbide, you're not going to be able to grind it. So, I mean, this is almost ridiculous because I have this thing so accurate right now off the grinder that this isn't all, almost isn't necessary. But you're not going to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but right off, it's not going to I think you're one over so 20 minutes. You're going to wish you had one. carbide to do this. In reality, the best way to do what I'm going to do right now is a fresh piece of paper for both of these little, little all I'm grinding is this little flat up there. That flat, not on the side of the plate. Right now I'm going to grind those two shoulders. The way I'm going to do it is I, I cut this paper off with a knife and then I come in here and kill that end with a piece of ceramic. Uh, uh, Healy art stuff works real good uh, so that nothing will cut against the blade. I'm going to take this and I'm going to push the blade against the side of that and I'm going to walk that in there and I'm going to actually grind the face of that punch cut. Did you get an idea of what I'm doing? 
Okay, now some grinders got shipped away. Like this one's got a, a box here. Okay, that doesn't help you a whole lot because you can't use both sides of the grinder. So it is. But, so you just get it and I'm making it right down my block. And I'm rocking it. So that I get as high as I want it to go. Now, since I can't use that side of the grinder, I'm just going to simply flip it over and push it against the, push the blade against the flat of the disc and watch the parallelism on the block. And do that again. Now, if it takes me one sheet of paper per side to get it right, that costs me maybe $2 yeah. at, at, at most. But $2 spent to do this and have it absolutely perfect is well worth it because if you don't do it this way, you probably spend about two or three days trying to do it. And you won't get it. You know, because it's a home unit with a home or, or a, a diamond home or a uh, uh, stone is not going to get you there quick, believe me. And so I'm going to pass this around just like it is right now. <laughs> and you guys can just see how, see how it feels and what it looks like. And uh, just imagine how much time that saves you. He gets a hundred and some dollars, hundred and fifty dollars for those little juice, but I'll tell you the things that you can do with it is, is phenomenal. And every fit between the bolster since I've used those has been totally, totally perfect. It used to be that I would have, um, you know, just that little tiny bit of rock. You'd think you'd have all the, you know, a light free fit, you know, where you couldn't see any light along the bolt or in the back of the guard. But when you put that up against something, it's that quick. You bang your there. There's no question. And that's what I like about, you know, making it quick. Just like checking the tip this way. It's quick. You're not gawky. You know, if you're gawky, you're, you ain't getting no one. You know, gawky ain't going to get your knife back. And, Trying to decide whether it's straight or whether those grind lines are even or the tip is in the middle. And by docking, is, 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 you might as well just go fishing, you know, because who knows if you're going to get it right or wrong, you know, if you're casting.